Well, good afternoon, everyone. Um, <clears throat> the Speaker and I and uh, the Majority Leader and the House Minority Leader go down to the White House this afternoon uh, to get uh, a briefing by the President on what he intends to, to say Wednesday night and to recommend to the American people. Um, I don't think it will be a surprise to any of you. It's my view and the view of, I think, clear majority of the Republican conference in the Senate, and I guess a lot of the Democrats as well, that the President should come up with a strategy, uh, present it uh, to the Congress, and give us a clear indication of how he ends, uh, intends to defeat uh, ISIL. If anybody had any doubts about this group, I think they were uh, eliminated by the beheading of two American journalists over the last few weeks. They are obviously a threat to us. They're not going to go away. And um, we need to have from the President of the United States, the most important leader in the world, a plan for eliminating them. And I hope that's what the President will be presenting uh, to the American people and to us in the next uh, few days. Well, we just returned from um, a break during which time we had a chance to get back home and to talk to our constituents and, more importantly, to listen to our constituents. Um, and we are presented by the majority leader with a stunt of a vote on a piece of legislation that uh, would rewrite the First Amendment to the United States Constitution and something that is going nowhere. As you know, a constitutional amendment has to be ratified by both houses two-thirds vote and uh, three-quarters of the states, and it's not going to happen. And the majority leader knows it. It's just like a lot of the other show votes we've had uh, recently. So notwithstanding the fact that uh, we've been back listening to our constituents and they're telling us about their concerns, their anxieties, their, their hopes, their dreams, their, uh, none of that's being handled here in the United States Senate, which is one reason why the approval rate rating, ranking for the United States Senate or Congress is 14 percent. I'm surprised it's that high, given the dysfunction here, primarily as a result of the majority leader's unwillingness to take up bipartisan legislation that's passed the House of Representatives that would help grow the economy and create jobs and get America back to work. But this is an apparent uh, election year strategy. The majority leader doesn't want to have any of his vulnerable incumbents have to take any tough votes on any legislation, which uh, to me says they don't want to do their job, because that is the job of members of the United States Senate, to take votes on controversial measures and let themselves, let them declare their position on those issues and to help the American people in the process. I mean, just say that it, it, the American people and voters generally just ought to be outraged by what's happening in the United States Senate um, this week. As Senator Cornyn pointed out, you've got all these big things going on around the world. The world's on fire. Um, ISIS keeps gaining ground. Uh, Russia continues its uh, aggression against Ukraine. Uh, Iran keeps uh, developing its nuclear capability. And here at home, we had the worst jobs report of the year in the month of August. Uh, people are continually being squeezed, middle-class families, by Obamacare, as we saw in the Alaska rate increases that just came out. And yet, here we are in the United States Senate um, with a, just a complete political show vote. Everybody acknowledges nothing's going to happen with this. And um, the Democrats just seem intent, really, on using the floor of the United States Senate to try and save their own jobs instead of trying to create jobs for the American people. Um, American people deserve better. Voters in this country deserve better. Uh, we obviously are very interested on, in working on jobs legislation, uh, growing the economy. The House of Representatives is going to send a jobs package over, and we've already got, uh, what, 40 bills here in the United States Senate that, that are jobs-related, economy-related uh, bills that are collecting dust on the majority leader's desk. And, so um, I think it's uh, incredibly unfortunate, frankly, really pretty stunning if you think about uh, where we are, um, the big challenges that we face, how serious these issues are, and the very unserious way in which the Democrat majority is dealing with it here in the United States Senate. American people deserve better, and I hope that uh, voters will uh, send a pretty loud, clear message when November rolls around. 
Uh, tomorrow night, the President is going to address the nation, and I believe the President has an obligation to outline the threat of ISIS to our own national security. This is not the time for half measures, for wishful thinking. Uh, it is not time to kick the can down the road. The President has an obligation to outline a strategy, a strategy of how he plans to defeat ISIS, to eliminate the threat, and to protect the American people. What the American people deserve to hear from the President tomorrow night is a plan, a military plan, a political plan, and a diplomatic plan of how to actually crush ISIS, not merely contain it. I think this is the first time I was home and I had people telling me that the House has passed over 300 bills that the Senate hasn't dealt with. You know, a lot of those bills were bipartisan when they passed the House. Many of them would pass the Senate. Here we are less than a month away from the beginning of the new spending year. Not a single appropriations bill has passed the Senate again, a Senate with no budget again. Uh, no wonder, as Senator Cornyn said and others are saying, people are frustrated with this process just not working. It looks like this week the, the votes we took on bills that uh, certainly appeared to just be political votes the first time are absolute political votes the second time. And it's not like there's not other work to do. It's not like we don't know what that work is. But it is like the majority leader refuses to get the work done. And I think the American people are catching on. Senator Powell, Senator Cruz said a little while ago at a press conference that the uh, continuing resolution should include the House passed legislation halting DACA. What do you think about that idea? Well, we're going to wait and see what the House sends over. I think they're going to act this week, and when we see what they send over, we'll take a look at it. Yeah, I think my, <clears throat> the view of myself and most of my members is the president should be seeking congressional approval, period, for, for whatever he decides uh, to do, because that's the way you hear from those of us who represent everyone in the country. That's the way you get congressional support. Uh, I said when Elizabeth Warren begins to sound like Dick Cheney, you know that uh, there's pretty broad bipartisan support here for dealing with this uh, group of uh, terrorists. So, uh, Jeff, I think my answer would be he really ought to be asking for our support whether or not he may think he's authorized to do what he intends to do. I think it would be in his best interest and the country's best interest. Dana? Dana? Yeah, and I've, I've said it publicly before, I think, including to you. <laughs> a couple of weeks ago, I think that's really what he ought to do. This is a matter of, of great seriousness. Look, this is the first time, I've, as you all know, I've been out on the campaign trail. This is the first time anything outside the borders of the United States has come up this year in my campaign. People are clearly following this. They now realize this is a threat to the United States. Uh, the, the president is the commander in chief, as we all know, and it's his responsibility to come up with a plan uh, for dealing with this. And I think it is to his advantage and the country's advantage to have Congress buy into that. And just to follow up, as you probably know, there is as much support as you're talking about, there is as much reluctance as well to take a vote on these sort of things like this. On both sides. Well, I, I, I can only give you my view, and I think it's the view of the majority of my members, which is this is a matter of extreme importance to the country, to our national security. It would be to his advantage and all of our advantage for Congress to be, in effect, approving a plan for defeating ISIL. Thanks, everybody.